Okay, we're going on to lesson five of our workbook. First word is abstruse, abstruse essay. And that means hard to understand and esoteric, which means that it's very hard in the sense that it's difficult material and that's why you can't understand it. So some similar words are obscure, complex, or profound. So it's not just a report that's badly written and so you can't understand it. It really is well written for that particular topic and it is difficult because it is very complex. Autonomous, 50 autonomous states. The 50 autonomous states of the United States are self-governing states with the root uh, auto, which means self, and nomo, which means law and order. These are important roots. Please write them down and memorize them. So auto is things that are, you know, like automatic. It is done with the self. And nomo is about law and order, like in the words like astronomy, economy, taxonomy, physiognomy. These are some other words that you might notice that these are all kind of academic words. It's about the, the law, order, arrangement of things. And so they tend to be the more academic material. The autonomous states are able to govern themselves, control themselves. So as an example, in terms of laws, there are, there are federal laws. The federal government, uh, headed by the Congress and the president, makes certain laws, but each state is able to make their own laws regarding, say, drinking age, driving age, right to, you know, possess a gun. Um, or carry a gun, things like that, uh, those are left up to the states. And so the states are considered autonomous in that sense. Another place you might hear about the word autonomous is when we talk about autonomous vehicles. Google and other companies are developing these autonomous vehicles. They are vehicles that drive themselves. They are self-controlling vehicles. The noun form of autonomous is autonomy. Daunt, undaunted by the threat. To daunt is to intimidate someone. So a bully daunts the other child. And so that's the daunt part of it. If you are undaunted, then you are not daunted. You are not made afraid by the bully. We could also talk about a daunting task, which is a job that is very intimidating. It's too big of a job for you to handle, so you get afraid, nervous about it at the beginning. Uh, or a daunting challenge, a challenge that seems very difficult to undertake. Efface. Efface the graffiti. And that means to rub out. So graffiti is the writing stuff on the walls, right? And someone has to efface that graffiti. I just noticed this interesting image here. Uh, this is actually a graffiti of someone effacing the graffiti. So the person there is not a real person. That is the graffiti itself. Kind of ironic, right? So we could also talk about coins with dates effaced by where. So imagine a coin the surface of which has been rubbed off over time through wear, and so you can't really feel the dates or the other images anymore. Then we say that the dates were effaced by wear. You can have a memory that is effaced by time. Certainly as you get old, you lose your memory. It seems like it's getting rubbed out of your memory. You would also hear uh, this expression that uh, someone was using self-effacing humor or he has a self-effacing attitude and it means that you're being kind of modest and making fun of yourself and putting yourself down for the sake of other people to amuse them, entertain them, or to make others feel better. That is self-effacing. Fell. Lumberjack felled the tree. And that means to cut or knock down. It is a transitive verb, which means that it takes an object to the sentence. It is different from the, the typical word fall that we think of. Fall, fell, fallen. That's the basic word. The tree falls, but it takes the lumberjack to fell the tree and then the tree will fall down. So it's a totally different word. And the breakdown is fell, felled, and felled for this word. 
incontrovertible, incontrovertible evidence. And that means indisputable, not open to question, which means that it is an absolutely true, factual, uh, definite kind of evidence that no one can argue against. So we break it down and we have in, which means not, contro, as in opposite, like contradiction, and vert or verse, which is to turn. And that's where we get controversy. Controversy is when people turn a against opposite of each other and they argue about things and that's a controversy but here we don't get a controversy because the ap evidence is absolutely certain so if someone says oh they had got the evidence of bigfoot bigfoot like uh, what you see here in the picture uh, is this incontrovertible evidence well uh, photos can be manipulated these days and they can be photoshopped or it could be a guy in a suit we don't know so this is not really incontrovertible evidence if we found some dna of um, some creature that was not human but similar to human possibly that might be incontrovertible evidence of something so generally think of some evidence so strong that no one can dispute it that's the idea Marred, marred surface of the table. That means the surface has been damaged or disfigured. So the verb to mar is to spoil or destroy it somehow. You can scratch it up, uh, you can paint on it, whatever. You are destroying that surface. That is to mar the surface of something. So if you have a marred reputation, somehow your reputation has been sullied. Somebody has defamed you and or told lies about you or something. You might have your life marred by drug problems, right? So if you have a lot of problems, then your um, life is destroyed somehow, spoiled somehow. Piety. Piety of the nuns. And that is the religious devotion, the godliness. This is being devoted to your God, being good and virtuous, things like that. Those qualities are the piety the adjective form is pious uh, so we talk about the pious nuns and nuns are by definition they should be pious because they give up their whole life uh, so that they can live for god in a convent somewhere thinking only about god and that would be being pious and that reminds me of this uh, famous thing from uh, philosophy, when you end up talking about Socrates or Plato in class, you will hear about this at some point in your high school or college, I'm sure. Um, there's this story of Euthyphro's dilemma. It is found in Plato's dialogue with Euthyphro, in which Socrates asks Euthyphro this question. The question is, is the pious loved by the gods because it is pious, or is it pious because it is loved by the gods. Okay, so you got to kind of read it slowly and think about it. It means something like, oh, let's say, you know, we can talk about a person, the pious person. Um, if this nun is pious, we call her pious nun, is that person loved by the gods because she's a pious person? Or do we call her pious because gods love this particular person? Then we call her pious. Okay, so it's a kind of a philosophical question, but that's where we use the word piety, pious. Reprehensible, reprehensible actions of the terrorist. Of course, terrorists do terrible things, right? They uh, hurt people and the reprehensible actions are deserving blame, which means it's bad and something that we should criticize. So the verb reprehend, which makes up the basis of this word, is to voice disapproval of, to censure, which is publicly criticizing someone. You might say your actions are reprehensible. Superficial, superficial knowledge of grammar. This means trivial or shallow, trivial in the sense that it is not very uh, important, that's trivial. And shallow means it's not very deep and profound. It's just on the surface. And that's what superficial means, on the surface, on the outside. 
super is the prefix, which means above and beyond, and faces, uh, that's face here. You don't need to know that one, but memorize the super part. But it is about being on the face, uh, on the outside. So when you talk about the superficial knowledge of grammar, then you know like the basic things like subject and verb and noun, pronoun, few things, but you don't know any deep, profound, structural things related to grammar then you just have a superficial knowledge of grammar. So we can talk about the superficial qualities of something. Let's say you saw a nice car and you're only concerned about the shape of it, the color of the paint and things like that, what you see on the outside, then that you're only concerned with the superficial qualities. So when a person, you know, if a guy is, you know, likes a girl and he only cares about how that girl looks, her hair, her you know, makeup, her clothes, things like that, he's being very superficial. Or if a girl, you know, looks for a rich guy only, then that would be considered superficial. You can be wasting money on superficial things. And there is one other situation where you hear superficial, and that's when someone says uh, he received superficial injuries. So maybe he was shot, but he did, wasn't hurt seriously because it was only superficial injuries. And you can kind of guess that it was just on the surface injuries, which means the bullet grazed his skin or something, but didn't really um, hit any organs or anything. All right, thanks for listening. You can get back to your workbook and memorize your phrases.